Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the blind playthrough on unfair difficulty. Time to level up our characters and then decide where we want to go. And we're starting with, um, let's say, with her, Cassia, who gets a new rank in Officer. For starters, or, uh, we have chosen mind over matters and I think I would want to use the navigator's perception um, instead of her agility which will immediately make her dodge much much better so that's fantastic I like that a lot and we can either get her willpower up further or her perception I think balancing it out a little bit, we're doing perception here with her and then willpower and she's going to cycle through both of uh, that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So here we go, look at that, 60 and 60, that's fantastic and we got 90% dodge. <laughs> She is a nimble character, for sure. I like how dodge seems to work, because your heavier armor makes it less likely for you to dodge, so that isn't bad at all. Got an operative uh, with, um, uh, with Idira here, and for her, I would like... I would like... Alright, I think we're going with Visions of Doom for her, which is a 5% penalty to dodge and parry, but it is stacking and it is for every psychic power uh, that an enemy receives. So if we AoE hit them, that'll just make them so much easier to hit afterwards. And we wanted to really use her as a debuffer of sorts. So that seems fine. Uh, we can continue with in uh, with willpower because I think that is where she excels at. So might as well continue with that. Visions of Doom uh, seems a legit option for her. I just need more spells with her. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, then we got uh, Argenta. Uh, the soldier with AOE damage. Uh, so let's take a look at that. I think for her, ballistic skill is just the name of the game. We need to hit better. That's still the biggest problem. All right, and for her, we're going with concentrated fire. The next ranged attack made by a soldier deals bonus damage and has an additional uh, dodge reduction in there, which is great. So that'll just allow us to more um, consequently dish out damage. So I have to wonder, are these here kind of capstone abilities? What is it called? What is the, uh, that called? Because we do have the same here. So these are better abilities. We got another ability over here. Hmm, okay. So those are abilities and not talents, apparently. Good. We're going with uh, Abelard, who is uh, selecting an ability as well. Let's double check what we're going to give him. All right, we got Taunting Scream with him, and I think that is simply the best uh, selection for us. I mean, Taunt is great uh, since we're playing him as a tank. Uh, we're continuing to go for Carouse because Carouse um, does a lot of good things such as uh, resist negative effects and I like that. So Carouse it is. We're now at 70 Carouse, 80 Carouse for him. That is actually quite good. Well, say what you want about Abelard, but he is a tank. And then finally Saiken, which... I found interesting, uh, I've already looked a little bit into it. So for starters, I think we need to continue working on our willpower. Unfortunately, we're only getting five instead of the big fat 10 uh, that Abelard just got. But, uh, and we cannot get 
intelligence, which hampers us a bit because we cannot uh, raise all of the lore. Uh, that's unfortunate with our combination. Soldier is good, but uh, the intelligence thing um, isn't really fitting so well into it. I, I was hoping we could get another available characteristic. Um, with Saiken, we do have the option to either do any of the soldier um, items. And I, I am wondering whether or not Concentrated Fire actually works on psionic abilities as well. Because it says here ranged area attack. And it also says end special abilities. So that in itself is cool. We got another um, another option to pick one, uh, so concentrated fire uh, will come uh, come through a little bit later. But the cool part is, just want to highlight, uh, we do have a second um, a second kind of specialization: sanctic powers, uh, pyromancy, divination, and biomancy are available. Or we're going a little bit deeper into our current uh, specialization. And the way that it works is we can now use either Dominate um, to let enemies come closer to us and basically lose their turn, which is great for crowd control, or Sensory uh, Deprivation, which basically means that the enemy is automatically blinded and they must make a, a test uh, to not get a big fat additional uh, penalty. Uh, this is one creature, this is one creature in 24 radius, this is in 16. So given that this is a little bit longer um, and they will do nothing, um, at the end of their turn target must make a willpower test, otherwise they will remain under this control. I think we're going with domination. I really like uh, the idea of that, just crowd controlling someone. And then with domination uh, we would... Uh, open uh, the features up to psychic assault which um, everybody takes psychic uh, shriek damage and is forced to willpower parent uh, test um, if they fail they are stunned and stunned uh, means that their actions and abilities are severely limited cannot parry dodge or make the text of opportunity enemies also receive bonuses on hitting stun targets that sounds great so the other option uh, would be mind bond at any time um, the, psy uh, the others can use uh, the psychers tests for perception intelligence willpower or fellowship uh, test for the willpower thing i think it is not bad because you can kind of buff your tank but then again the tank has a lot of carouse so should shrug off whatever is happening anyways uh, that looks okay, but uh, not really sure. I think I go mind uh, dominate into psychic assault, which if you look at psychic assault has this nice little cone in front of them. And then we do have mind rupture. The target makes a willpower test and if it fails, um, the target immediately attacks um, other targets. Uh, you need to have um, psychic assault for that. So it's kind of the ultimate ability, so to speak. Um, if the uh, uh, after the target suffers psychic damage, uh, their willpower is reduced until the end of combat. Um, then, if the test succeeds, the target just suffers uh, psychic uh, shriek damage, and their willpower is reduced. So, it's a loss. Loss. It's a single uh, single target damaging ability. So, it's either that. Or we're trying to do that concentrated fire thing together with the staff. Uh, but given that we're so low on our damage, um, on the other hand, concentrated fire. Hmm. I want to talk myself into it. Let's go with dominate. We needed crowd control. And then we're going into psychic uh, assault. Uh, concentrated fire. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, the other option would be to get pyromancy going. We don't need a... Well, a healer could be nice as well. Hmm. Okay, let's do crowd control for now. Don't sway too much on your plan, Saiken. So, that works very well so far. 
I think we got a good upgrade. What we don't have is any form of healing supplies and I'll try to find out how we can get that. All right, welcome back. So I uh, leveled everybody up and uh, found no further mats, uh, which means we are now going to Rika's Menores uh, because that's the next planet. Lord Captain, sorry to disturb you. It's pandemonium outside in the bridge gate. One of the officers seems to be demanding an audience with you in person. I think I hear Master Versian's voice. In any case, I want to warn you in advance. Well, Time for another personal audience. It seems that nowadays you cannot fly your ship through this uh, sector without always having a personal audience. By the way, I noticed that very similar to other Owlcat games, Pathfinder in particular, Pathfinder Kingmaker, you do have like specific um, posts on your ship that you need to fill. And I'll, I'll show you in a second. Let's do this conversation first. In true Skeletor fashion, we're turning around and Abelard says this is not a conduct of an officer. These are the antics of a highborn brat out of a lark. Explain yourself, a lieutenant. I, I apologize, sir, but I must speak to the Lord Captain. Very well, lieutenant. You may address uh, the Lord Captain. Not release because I uh, see you've already seen it fit to disturb him. Your unauthorized appearance on the bridge is a display of belligerence towards a high-ranking officer and will be locked in your personal file without delay. All right. Lord, Lord Captain, Lieutenant Avran Vent, requesting permission to speak on a matter of extreme importance and urgency. I will listen, uh, and we are going to listen what they have to say. <coughs> this matter cannot wait, they say. Any minute now, an assault unit will be dispatched to the lower decks on orders to crush workers, strike by any means necessary. But I'm convinced that uh, this step is unwarranted and that uh, the crisis itself was provoked by the actions of one of the senior officers. Mm. Abelard, not in a hurry to intervene. Uh, let's out a skeptical. <coughs> My Lord Captain, I urge you to investigate the actions of Seneschal Verestrian and uh, to intervene in what's happening on the lower decks because very soon we will have a mutiny or massacre at our hands. So, how does this? Uh, did that start? The situation could boil over any minute. I'll give you the considered version. It all began. When the enforcers found a cultist amulet on the body of someone who has been killed in a drunken brawl. We reported it up to the chain immediately, arranged for cleansing right to be performed and opened an investigation. No heretics have been found alive, but the search has brought tensions between the enforcers and workers. Where is uh, Seneschal in all of that? Uh, Abelard says, I shall explain. I beg you to hurry, time is running out. I will not hurry. Since my competence is under scrutiny, I shall speak for as long as I see fit. There is an establishment order to the way things are done in this ship, and one of the pillars of that system is the rogue trader's attention is not distracted by trivial matters. It is the Seneschal's role to ensure that. I've always handled internal problems myself, so, of course, when I receive information about cultists hiding out in the lower decks, I took the matter in hand. So long as I live, no one of the women who murdered Theodora, uh, Van Valkyrs, uh, will find refuge on her ship. Hey, you were far too heavy handed, Seneschal Versian. Arrest interrogations and mass punishment for the entire sectors it has driven the people to the brink. Now there is a strike on the lower decks, in Depot 4 to be precise. Three worker clans have been involved, but many more are passively supporting them. The situation could degenerate into all-out insurrection. But when I reported my concern, the only response I received was an order to de dispatch an assault unit and crush the strike with maximum force. Okay. Mm. What is Depot 4? Uh, uh, Abeldot uh, says Depot 4 is one of the poorest sectors on the lower deck. It is home to the clans of the general laborers. They are not as valuable to the ship as the families who have served its specialized systems for generations. 
they are an easily replaceable resource and one which is now more besides giving succor to cultists and minions of Al uh, our, can uh, our arch enemy. The poor four is poor and troubled, but at worst that means drunken fights and illegal rotgut brewing. We have handled the workers in the poor four in the past. We would have done so again. And the crackdown of Depot 4 hasn't been so harsh. And another important point to bear in mind, the problem is not limited to this sector. It is located on one of the most populated lower decks and everything that happened uh, there has a knock-on effect to all neighboring sectors. Abelant, what have you to say for that? I see no need to add anything. I acted within the remit of my authority, guided exclusively by the best interests of your protectorate and your personal safety. If you wish to confirm uh, the rectitude of my actions for yourself, I have no objections. All right. I'm certain the Seneschal was acting within the authority, but I will verify the soundness of the decisions myself. Throne preserves you, Lord Captain. I thank you for your support. And Abelard says, an enterprise bordering on so uh, sophomeric, uh, but please uh, yourself, Lord Captain. However, I categorically insist that I escort you. All right, we're going to go with all of the party members into the lower decks. This uh, might go out of hand quite quickly. Adabart is typically a good dude, so I wonder why he is so persistent here. Okay, uh, so remember that I mentioned you can put on uh, put on posts, and that's exactly what we did. We have a commander, which is really just kind of an interrogator with persuasion. Then we have a cannoneer, a master maneuverer, a warp channeler, and a master of etherics, uh, which apparently is the box systems and so on. Um, no idea what that does, but I know that I could upgrade a little bit here. We got some scrap metal, and we can definitely upgrade the ship uh, a little bit l later at the moment we haven't done anything with the ship so far it seems basic as basic can be only thing that we did is we upgraded uh, the ram to level one and we upgraded the hull to level one which seems about right good so let me suggest something along the lines of this and hey it's Rosirian take that scrum all right that's not cool guys and you can't just attack an officer the lower decks are a source of endless problems. Sometimes I dearly regret that we cannot replace all of the locals with servitors. If people dare to disrespect the senior officer, they would not have a chance to express such disrespect if we were not here. If the situation has been dealt with with the relevant officers. It's a junior officer's worst failing to pass the problems up the chain of command I've never been able to abide it. I should say it again, it was a mistake to come here on Lieutenant Venn's whim, Lord Captain. Let's keep moving. Embrace true power. Let's see. The opportunity. Okay, lots of lots of valves here, not surprising. What is surprising is I that we find stuff that we can use because all of that already belongs to us. 
If you think about it, you really shouldn't find any loot here. The world will bow. I still do not see our purpose in coming here. Relax, old man. Going for a stroll on the lower decks at... The sounds of a heated discussion reverberate through the ship's bay. Lieutenant Avria Vent of the ship's enforcers is bearing the pass of a heavily built assault unit officer, judging by their expressions and tone, the standoff has dragged for some time already. I have my orders to put an end to the unrest and purge the sector. You can take your orders and shove them. This is my deck and my sector. The only three people who can waltz in here without my express permission is the first officer, the rogue trader and the emperor himself. Abadar says all of my lessons fall on deaf ears. We encountered some locals on our way here. The conduct was outrageous. They even throw uh, things at us. People are getting desperate, clearly. They saw the assault unit and decided that they have nothing less to lose. I apologize, Lord Captain. It is outrageous. I'm su sure people simply didn't recognize you. Uh, I wouldn't have occurred otherwise. We will deal with them once the current situation is resolved. Alright, I want to speak to the uh, to the strikers. Intriguing. Are these the strikers? All right, they are here, I see. All right, a dozen uh, pair of eyes start apprehensive, uh, apprehensively at you. The people before you are typically inhabitants of the lower deck. They take you for simple clothing, crude weapons, and faces that display a variety of levels of mutation, uh, from barely discernible to outright grotesque. Lord Captain, you've come down to us, says Rivet. Tell me what's troubling you. Why are you striking? Striking? That news to us. What we're doing is asking questions, saying what we think. Old woman, shut up, Rivet. Here's the deal, your lordship. Your damned enforcers are all over us down here. They say they're looking for cultists. One wrong word, and they are reaching for the batons. They want to punish someone, they turn the heating up all the way for a week at a time, uh, uh, so we get sick and freeze. In my clans, two little ones died from inflammation in their lungs because of the informers. Yeah, that is shit. It's all true. And as the only officer who stood up for us, it's clear as day. Um, who had a mother from the lower decks who grew up amidst of us. Your lordship, we're not villains here, we're honest worker, your servants will plot no disorder. Hmm. I was told that one of you found in possession of a cultist amulet and that there was heretics hiding here. Cultist amulet, what is that? The Gyuga they found on the dead drunkard. It was something evil forbidden. We sure didn't know. The enforcers just said we were looking for her heretics amongst us. That we would be punished. But could there be a heretic here? We know our people. And there have been no new faces around. For the Samulet or whoever, uh, whatever it was. They took it off a dead body. There is no cult still breathing in our sector. But when that fight broke out, uh, some Enterprise folk saluted bodies. The boots, nobody ever uh, treaded these decks with boots so fine and can, can tell you. Seems like the cultists have uh, better commanders than us. 
Uh, Reaver says, oh yeah, the boots were really fine. It must have been pocketed by someone who knows better. Uh, we don't need amulets around here. We're worshipping the Emperor and we're working down here uh, before the machine spirit of the large and small transformers. Argenta says, naive children, weren't you taught from the early age about the dangers of the arch enemy's creations? Weren't you warned that any unfamiliar object could be one of them? We were told, Holy Sister, but that was a long time ago. The last time we saw a confessor in our sector was just after I had my third little one. Argenta, that is regrettable, but you cannot lay out the burden of leading a righteous life on the shoulders of the Holy Father, who is to blame when the beasts crawl out and these armulus stole from heretics, the Holy Father who was not there, or the scavenger who brought evil down by himself for their neighbors. What changes do you want? Would you look at this? The excellent Lord Captain is asking us, Bill Shreds, what we want. Well, here is it. What we want is to uh, is you to rein in your damned and force us to quit turning off the heat and to stop battering everything that moves. No, that's not it. We want the enforcers to be gone from here and we want to be armed. Give us arms and we'll govern ourselves. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. All woman says you speak for yourself and your clan, I speak for me and mine. I don't want empty gestures, I want real change. The promise to us the world now, but as soon as uh, the anointed one turns back, the brutes will uh, be on us harder than before. Coercion, spreading out anarchy on the ship is the first step towards embracing chaos. Putting weapons into untrained hands would be even worse. What's more, the enforcers are needed to maintain oversight and order. Without the, those demands, we will consider the rest. Old Lernis and the Lord Captain himself has come down here to offer concessions. And I don't think a single person the whole day before even stood next to a rogue trader, let alone talk to them. Back down, now it's not time to be stubborn. Okay, she said, I'll shut up, I will indeed. I won't go against two clan leaders on my own. If you want to make uh, peace with the enforcers, make your peace. Uh, then it is decided. Uh, uh, let's ask Abelard. The story uh, is go uh, of going scavenging and boots and accidentally picking up a heretical amulet doesn't convince me these peoples weren't moments away from rebelling, possible becoming minions of the arc enemy. We must not give them what they want, even if they did acquire something uh, innocently, purely out of their own stupidity. All right, then it is decided the uh, persecution will stop and I will expect you to assist uh, locating any remaining amulets or weapon left by the cultists. The world trembles beneath my feet. Okay, well, that was an interesting little conversation here in the lower deck. Let's seize the opportunity. Are you pleased with your investigation? He asked. You caught out to a disloyal rebel. You believed their lies and showed them leniency. Next time the ship is attacked by cultists, that rebel will become um, in with open arms and let them wreak uh, whatever havoc they like because you see, because they see you as a weak leader. 
Is that how you see the future of the helm of the Valencian Protectorate? Um, his open criticism is okay. We don't want to shut him down. Uh, I could deflect and say, let's talk about your role. You allowed this revolt to happen. Your actions practically guaranteed it would. But let's uh, be mindful and uh, wise. There is some truth in your criticism. I should say so, he sim uh, says. You simply needed to trust me. I would have handled the situation myself. Remember, Lord uh, Captain Theodora, do you think she ever set one slippery foot on the lower decks? Such matters were left to myself and the junior officer, as any true strategist and uh, rogue trader should. Hmm. Maybe if Theodora had spent more time on trifling matters, she wouldn't have wound up that. There is a new Lord Captain aboard the ship, and I will not repeat her mistake. Albert looks at you stunned. I commend your decisiveness, but I'm uncomfortable with introducing new protocol in the midst of a crisis. I uh, lost my temper, Lord Captain, I believe I owed you uh, to explain myself. The prospectory of the Van uh, Valicius uh, Protectorate is not just an empty phrase to me. I left the Imperial Navy uh, for a chance to see it flourish. Um, rogue traders do not simply forge new routes. Uh, they create order out of anarchy. This is true. So I left behind everything I had known. I embarked upon this incredibly reckless venture. Uh, Lord Captain uh, uh, Theodora entrusted me with all of the concerns I had none for. Uh, she would go off on her flagship for long periods uh, to distant frontiers on scouting voyages. And then suddenly everything had been built over for years and years began to quake, rattling like a flimsy hanger. One of the senior officers betrayed us all, the rogue trader who killed and is now known happening planets. I tell you honestly, without fear, appearing weak. All this has come as a grievous blow to me. I'm not panicking or grieving because I cannot allow myself. I'm duty bound to aid the new rogue trader, to aid you. And to do that I must insulate you from problems that I've been dealt with. I've tried uh, to test procedures to set out uh, the ship regulations. Procedures that were established long ago have functioned smoothly. All right, so this perspective important to me. I value what Theora created. I trust that the situation is an aberration of the ship's otherwise uh, smooth operations. Since the established procedure, I see no reason to change them. I've seen plenty of sentiments, but very little. Hmm. I have no plans to rely on your judgment. No, that's not it. Um, I understand, but you need to learn to respect me as the Lord Captain. Accept it and start living in a new world, a world where Theodora is gone and where you and I have new decisions made. Ah, that's too rough. All right. Um. Very good. Got some experience out of it. Unseen, uncover my path. And had an interesting exploration of the lower decks. One uh, that took half an hour as a side gig. So yeah. For whatever reason, we didn't get into a fight and we couldn't do anything, but I don't want to cut the episode short here. We are still trying very much to get to that planet. 
Wow. Good. Recut Minoris, please. Here we cut. As ship makes its way through the st uh, star system, a strange fatigue falls over you. Your eyelids glow, uh, grow heavier. The quill you have been using to draw up yet another order falls from your hand. You raise your head and with your start someone else is in your study. You stand up, staring at dozens and dozens of corpses surrounding you. Amongst their number, you recognize the disfigured and bloodied faces of those who died in the ship's bridge and you met in your previous life. How is this possible? Where are the enforcers uh, posted to stand guard? As for your own accord, shard lies on the edge of the desk, so remnant of um, Kunrad Vogtvor's weapon slipped into your hand the metal searing cold the dead sway from side to side closing in around you in a nightmarishly slow advance the dead remain deaf to your words creeping even closer with inevitability of death you belatedly realize that your trembling hands have found the shard um, when its razor sharp edges cut into your palm. An unbearingly bright light uh, floats around you and you find yourself surrounded by a groveling minions, their bodies shivering in your mere presence. Your hands no longer hold a pitiful shard, but a majestic intri uh, intricate weapon, a skillfully crafted sword with a strange unnerving proportion, a curved design and an unusual hilt adorned with the image of a closed eye. It's a demon weapon. Uh, you open your eyes, the tapestry is woven, the past is chosen, accept your fate, champion. Throw the demon blade away, never. Resisting your fate is futile, it says. You wake from the vision kneeling next to your desk, clothes are drenched in sweat in the sour taste of your tongue. Your head is ringing and you struggle to recall the faces and images of the sword in your hand. Only the deep cut on your palm and the bloody chart lying on the floor reminds you of what has just transpired. What did we just witness? A call of the edge. The powerful warp entity promised the rogue traders might and power if he managed to become the new champion of chaos. Yeah. Uh, suck these um, imperial. You know what I use. Uh, uh, what I would say. Well. No, we're not going to fall down to chaos, playing a psyker that uh, is not doing that. Recut Minoris, fifth attempt. We're beginning to scan the world and we find the starport. Extraction, a mobile mining outpost small industrial complex can be deployed on practically any world uh, okay that would be cool if we had an extractum but we do not instead we do have a starport and we shall go into that starport the next time when we're playing rogue trader for now uh, we have done a lot of preparation and a couple of interesting quests thanks a lot for watching Next time, we're entering the starport uh, in fresh manner as Saiken and his crew is departing. Thanks a lot, have a good one, and take care. Bye-bye.